with us now for some more insight into the president's announcement is Terry Boston, CEO of PJM Interconnection, who we're welcoming back to the Energy Report. Good to see you again. It's good to see you, Susan. So tell me about today's uh, announcement and PJM Interconnection, and what, is this, uh, what does this huge announcement do for your organization and the ones that you're related to? I, it is a big day in Washington and a big day on the grid. Uh, the PJM Interconnection covers from Chicago to Delmarva Peninsula and from New York, New Jersey to North Carolina. And of uh, the stimulus money today, there will be a total of uh, almost $1 billion in the PJM region. Wow. And that will leverage uh, with the investments from our own members uh, to about $2.2 billion of total. That's quite to a day for you guys today. Eh? It was a great day. Uh, tell us what, what, how quickly and what will be the immediate changes that we see when this happens. Next we see exactly who this, who this gets awarded to. Uh, it has been announced who it's been awarded to. Those companies will be in the marketplace looking for devices and smart meters. We will have a challenge to have the devices ready for installation, but we're ready for that challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we learned during the blackout of August of 2003 was that we needed more synchronized data coming into our control center and uh, PJM and 12 of our member transmission companies uh, will install 90 synchrophasers that will give us data into our control center at, at 30 samples per second, much faster than what we normally sample with SCADA information. Wow, okay, so tell us about how, what, what the announcement on the scale that was made today does for you know, the biggest issues that PJM has to deal with, has to deal with, and that is, of course, long distance transmission and storage of, uh, of energy yeah. as uh, renewables come on board. It will allow us to integrate the wind and have demand side options uh, to take the fluctuations in both the solar and the wind power on the system, so we will have uh, in-home storage, uh, plug-in hybrid vehicles, uh, which comes first, the the plug-in hybrid vehicles or the smart grid, right. uh, it looks well, like the smart grid is One of your concerns has always fast. been that, that, that uh, uh, renewables are going to come on faster than the storage, and you include the, those vehicles as, as the storage points. Yes. Uh, uh, any progress there since your first experience? Well, we had a news conference here on the Hill today to talk about the need for storage to help us integrate the wind. When we built out the nuclear plants in the 70s and 80s, we built about 25 gigawatts of storage to enable them to operate in the off-peak hours. But is wind coming on faster than storage? Yes. <laughs> and we need to change that. Okay. Uh, uh, tell us about the, the speed which with, uh, with which wind is, is concerned. What, 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 what could it mean? I mean, you mentioned blackouts. Okay. Do we need to worry about that going forward? Uh, we're working hard to make sure you don't have to worry about it. We are worrying about it uh, in our control room and in our planning of the system. Uh, last December, we had a little over 1,200 megawatts of wind on the PJM system. Today, we have 3,000 megawatts. By the end of the year, we'll have 3,600. And we have 42,000 megawatts in our queue that uh, has requested to connect to our system. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're working hard to get the transmission uh, assets on the ground. Our board has actually approved $14.7 billion of transmission that's not part of the stimulus bill right. that will be built uh, to enable delivery of power uh, across the system. And increased reliability. Um, uh, what resistance are you encountering as you, as you back these kinds of uh, transmission lines? Uh? policy-wise or otherwise? Uh, the biggest issue is uh, siding, getting the transmission and the land and the right-of-way in place. Uh, the, the planning uh, with the money that has been set aside by DOE, we're moving very quickly on that. Uh, and uh, to some extent, uh, making sure the cost allocation is mm -hmm. fair and uh, among all the consumers of electricity. So the steps that you're seeing being taken right now, this is a big picture view, uh, uh, to decarbonize the electricity sector and build out this smart grid, are they the, the right ones? Are they happening in the, in the way that you believe will be the right way to go? Uh, as far as incorporating nuclear or whatever, whatever you see coming? Uh, if you think about wind and you think about nuclear, it's going to be remote from our load centers. So if you like wind and you like nuclear, which Long I do, I will, transmission. you've got to have the transmission. You've got to love transmission and get it built in order to enable the wind and enable the base load. Do you all believe that regional transmission needs to happen at the same time, distributed energy at the same time as long distance? Uh, they have to come together. Uh, it is an integrated system. So as we put the wind in the system, uh, we have to integrate it with all the other resources. So the idea that we have with an Eastern Interconnection Planning uh, Collaborative is to roll up the regional plans and then look top down at those plans to see 
what uh, interregional lines have to be built. So pick into the future for us, uh, those of us who will have these plug-in hybrids, how soon do you think we'll be plugging our cars in at our homes and uh, with power flowing both ways between us and the utilities, utilities buying power back from us? Uh, I think by last year at the University of <laughs> Delaware, we will have that in place and, and mine in your home uh, within five years. Five years? Yeah. Okay, we're going to have you back in five years because Clean Skies News will certainly be here and we'll, uh, we'll hold you to that. Thank you very much. All right, Terry Boston, PJM Interconnection, thank you so much. Thank you.